Hey, I'm Annalise. And I am Tony, and we are from The Rook Room, which is a pop-up all about unique board game experiences and events here in Des Moines and Central Iowa. Uh, we have partnered with XBK and have a bunch of nerdy, geeky, game-centered events on the calendar coming up. So definitely be sure to check those out. Go to therookroom.com, xbklive.com, all of our social networks. You can find all the information there. Okay, so Andre Davis is going to be taking the stage at the upcoming Live Local and Loud show at XBK on July 16th. XBK hosts a vinyl happy hour from six to seven for anyone to come and hang before the show. There's discounted drinks, great music. You can see what the space is like if you haven't been there before. It's very cool. Uh, the show itself starts at 730. So anyone can come for that vinyl happy hour before, but the show itself is for ticket holders only. Speaking of tickets, they're 10 bucks. You can find them at xbklive.com along with a bunch of other details. Uh, tickets have been going fast for every one of these shows. The last one I went to was an absolutely packed house. So make sure to grab your tickets now. Space is limited, masks are required, and there is a free live stream of the event on Facebook and YouTube that night. So if you can't get tickets before the time or you're out of state and can't make it, uh, you can watch it live right then and there online. So joining us today is Andre Davis himself. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, we're so excited to have you. All right. So this is our game. It's called Showtime and Tell. This is a segment where we get to know the artists and performers of our city a little better by going beyond the kind of usual interview questions. And we're going to play a little game. So how this works, in case this is your first time watching or you need a little refresher, we're going to give three prompts and ask him to find things around his home. And then we'll talk about them, why he grabbed them, what they mean to him. And that's basically it. All right. You ready to play? Let's do it. Okay, so the three things we need you to find for us today is a gift from a loved one, something that you've picked up while traveling, and something that inspires you creatively. Inspires, okay. A gift from a loved one, something that inspires me, something I picked up while traveling. Okay. Got it. Okay, so just immediately, because right now I'm in my room. All right. Yes. So this so all right. I won. <laughs> Perfect. Gift from a loved one. Like, boom. So I'll be stepping into my living room right now. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Love the house tour. Love the yeah. cribs. Let me say something I picked up while traveling. Mm -hmm. I picked up while traveling. Mm. No, I did not pick that up while traveling. Okay. <laughs> my, my living room is my actual rook room that I have my. Yes. Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> All my chess players out there, any y'all want smoke? I got you. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna have to talk about that. Oh <laughs> uh, man, I'm something I picked up while traveling. Ah, yes. Okay, I actually came to the no reason. Success. Okay, there we go. All, All right. right. <clears throat> Show us what you got. Actually, no, I did this wrong. You said something that inspires me. Oh, man. That's okay. Yeah. We'll edit it. Uh, all this inspiration. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the first item I picked up is this dashiki. Mm. One is the coolest dashiki I've ever seen in my life because it has a hood on it, man. I don't know any other dashiki that has a hood on it. Uh, awesome. This is the item I picked up while traveling. Um, I'm from St. Louis. And every year in St. Louis, they have this festival called the African Festival. And I want to say it was may have been like 2016. Uh, me and my friends, we were out at the African Festival and they had like all these different merchants out there and all these different setups. And we were obsessed with finding this guy. We kept calling him Black Jesus because we're pretty sure that if Jesus existed, he would look like this guy. So we okay. were trying to figure out well, where is Black Jesus. We know he's around here somewhere. And as we were looking for Black Jesus, <laughs> they're finding the dashiki. And I'm like, ooh, okay, I need to cop that dashiki because that dashiki is fire. And then as soon as I'm like up checking it out, and then I let it down, I'm like, there go Black Jesus. I'm oh, like, so first, <laughs> let me get this dashiki off me. And then we gotta go see so Black Jesus. <laughs> and there's a guy, like Black dude, he has locks, uh, he had a turban on his head, and walked around with a, a big staff. Oh my gosh. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure this is 
Jesus reincarnated. So <laughs> biblically old school style. Like definitely. Yeah. Um, so I have my picked up while traveling. Yes, can I see it uh, again? No. I want to. It looks like it have every color. So yeah, it's burgundy, blue, yes. yellow. Like Ooh. it's one of them. That's beautiful. Like, low, key, low key, when I'm out here trying to flex on people, <laughs> like, oh, you have nice African garb. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and I love the story that comes with it too. That's hilarious. The, no, it's definitely it was definitely a time. The African yeah. festival in St. Louis is definitely the move for anybody who hasn't gone yet. Um, so a gift that I've got from a loved one yeah. is this here. Um, oh his name is Percy, short for persistence. Nice. Oh, beautiful. And Percy is made out of, I believe, um, Osage orange. Is the, the kind of tree. Cool. I love that. Is that like a like a natural thing in the wood, like a, a crack or something running through too? So apparently, um, Osage oranges, uh, when they get really old, they corrode from the inside instead of the outside. So okay. this hole just pretty much means that this is a very old tree. A very wise bird. Yeah. Absolutely. And it makes it completely unique too. And I love the look that it gives to it. That it, that's not perfect because you know that that wouldn't be a special either. No, and it's honestly because I got it from a, a mentor of mine, and like he is an all around artist. He's a whole nother level. Um. So, but he also crafted many birds like this, and they're crafted to fit in your hands and like are smooth to the touch. So they're supposed to be held and supposed to be caressed. Um. The story behind Percy was I had a few years ago experienced um, a series of seizures because uh, I I didn't know at the time, but apparently you can process too much information, um, and the seizures would be kind of like your way of your body's way of trying to reset. It's like all right, this is doing too much. Turn it off. Turn it back on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And all of my seizures were happening at nighttime. So I wouldn't even know that I was having them. Um, I ended up dislocating my shoulder during one of them. Mm-hmm. And then at the time I ended up like biting my tongue and uh, the blood on the pillow afterwards is kind of what led up to finding out like, oh, like this is what's happening There's here. There's something going on. Yeah. So oh one gosh. of my mentors, uh, Ted, uh, and he has a... Um, a studio, an art studio out in Indianola. And I was going out there with another one of my mentors, shout out to MK47. And as we were going out there, he sends me an email of like this picture of this blue bird on top of a a black branch. Mm. And he's like, this looks like a blue bird on top of a black branch, but it is not. I'll explain it to you when you get here. Oh my gosh. That sounds so, like a mentor already. <laughs> Ted is super deep. Like that's great. I, I, I think I'm intentional with everything and how I move. Ted is a whole nother level. <laughs> so we get to the studio and he has a treasure chest full of birds. And I'm like, what you want me to do? He's like, okay, there's a bunch of birds in this chest. One of them is yours, but I'll let them tell you which one is yours. Mm-hmm. And as you feeling them, touching them, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm like, all right, cool. Break it down for me. So Percy was the first one I picked up because of the imperfection. All the rest of them were really smooth, well-rounded. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, no, nah, Percy has a hole right there in his heart. And I like that. Like, I feel yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so he's like, do you know what kind of bird this is? I'm like, no. It's like, this is an indigo bunting. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, Sweet. Like, uh, indigo buntings, they look blue during the day because of how their feathers are positioned and the way the sunlight hits them, it reflects off as blue, but they're actually black birds. It's like, oh, okay, you are some blue. So, so in the daylight, black birds look blue. Exactly. <laughs> 
I like that Moonlight reference. Of course. Um, so as he's explaining that to me, he asks me a question. He goes, do you know what a group of indigo buntings is called? And I'm like, uh, what? He's like, yes, flock is like a, a general term for a group of birds, but depending on what kind of birds they are, they have different names. Like a, a group of crows is called a murder. Mm-hmm. So a group of indigo buntings, however, is called a sacrifice. Now, because indigo buntings are blue during the daytime, they have a bunch of predators that attack them and kill them during the day. So when it's time for them to migrate south during the winter, the sacrifice happens at night. So my mentor gave this to me as a way for, as a way of recognizing that, yes, I'm out here working hard, gathering information, trying to help people, making music out in the community, doing law school and making a lot of these sacrifices. Mm-hmm. But I don't have to make them alone. Oh my gosh. That's so, beautiful. Shout out to Ted. Yeah. Shout out to Ted. I have goosebumps. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love, these, I love these stories. I could just listen all day. Like, mm-hmm. man, you have some good mentors too. Dang. <laughs> One of my biggest blessings so far. Oof. Okay. Yes, dude. Okay. So the last thing, something that inspires you creatively. One of my biggest uh, influences ever, which is why I went to go back to pick up the autobiography of Malcolm X. And the reason why this is one of my biggest creations, uh, inspirations creatively, is because one of the things that has drawn me toward Malcolm X is that he's one of the leaders that cannot be held into one point in time. Mm-hmm. You have to accept Malcolm throughout his whole entire life. You have to accept him when he was Detroit Red, out here stealing and committing crimes to him in prison, to him outside of prison and being in the nation of Islam. And then you have to accept him once he makes the Hajj and comes back and then his ideas change. You have to accept him in his entirety. He's not a black leader that you're like, this is Malcolm X. This is what he is. He's a, a combination of things. And Malcolm X as a speaker, has always been a speaker who's this fire, passion, every single time, even when his mind changes. So just as much fire and passion he speaks with something he believes in in that moment, and then he changes his mind and finds something new. He's going to speak with that new idea with the same amount of passion and fire as he did with the first one. So it's a, a great lesson on change and growth. So when I'm trying to do something creative, um, I'm in my mind, I'm trying to channel that of like, this is what I felt in this moment during this time. And I'm going to let that be as free and as open as I can allow it to be. And then as soon as I get to a space, I'm like, I want to try something new. I'm like, but what if this has nothing to do with what you said last time? Like, this is what I feel now. So I'm yeah. going to channel this feeling with just as much power and passion as I did the last one. Um, so I always, look back on Malcolm for that and I, I thank him for his contribution. You know, rest in peace to Honorable El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. Mm-hmm. Is this a book that you return to uh, often as well? I mean, it, it looked like it had a pretty prominent place in your space as well. Yeah, I, I, I want to say I've read it close to five or six times, mostly because every time I read it, I get something new out of it, depending on where I am in my life which is essentially just the experience of reading books because, Mm -hmm. you know, the more you read, the more you come in and the more you read and the more experience you have, you bring that experience to the knowledge that you're consuming at the time. Um, So yeah, every time I pick it up and I read through it, it's usually a point in my life where I am, I have to make a really big decision. And if I have to make a really big decision, I'm like, all right, Malcolm, talk to me. And since he's somebody who had to make so many changes and had to make decisions and stand on those decisions, all right, talk to me now. Um, I find his story super inspiring every time I have to make a choice and stand on my choice. So, yeah, shout out to Malcolm, man. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. That's great. So how do you 
balance then as you're continuing to build an audience through your art, how do you balance, you know, trying to be something that people can maybe understand and be uh, this kind of one static thing versus being whoever you are at every moment that someone might approach you? I feel like that would be such a challenge. It definitely is a challenge. Uh, whenever I'm sitting there talking to some of the marketing homies, I'm like, yo, how do you market the real, fam? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because the real changes. And just like you said with Malcolm, like he is, he is and has been many things through his life and to many people different. Yeah. And I think for me, the balance is putting humanness first and framing humanness in the way of change. So whenever people experience me or experience my work, I'm constantly giving them multiple feelings and multiple things all at once. So it's like, if you like what I do, or even if you don't like most of it, you're going to like something. (laughs) Right, yeah. I like it when you just rap, or I like it when you just sing, or I like it when you do this weird thing with your voice and this kind of sounds cool here. Like, it's something there for everybody. Um, And I think that, for me, has made it a lot easier to essentially be myself and not have to be in that space of I'm stagnant you're only going to get this um because if anybody does come to me like yo fam you are this kind of artist I'm like have you not heard <laughs> this other track you, yeah you, you, you must have listened to the album I got you I got you, you hit a guitar <laughs> in the back fam like no nah, don't put me in that box mm. yeah okay so some made. of the sorry what was that I was saying humans weren't made for boxes the world is a sphere yes Yes. So what are some of the inspirations that kind of guide you creatively um, in the music world? So music world um, have so many inspirations. Most of them are, I don't take necessarily for myself. I just take them to enjoy and then use them as avenues to figure out what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so that's like wonderful artists like uh, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, mm-hmm. uh, Marvin Gaye, Michael Jackson. Um, I love all of their work, grew up listening to them, like, oh, man, I love this. Um, like, John Coltrane and Miles Davis, for me, communicated how to make somebody feel something without saying anything. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care who you are, if somebody breaks out some jazz and it's John Coltrane, you're going to sit in the room and be like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Like, there's a difference between elevated music and John Coltrane. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A whole different feeling, and you, you don't really have a choice. It's hit you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have artists who inspire me, like, very directly. Um, so my uncle is a huge hip-hop head, <laughs> and whenever uh, I come around and listen to, like, whatever the mainstream hip-hop joints was at the time, I'm like, no, nah, see, you look to this, see, you listen to that bull, mm-mm, he go the real bull. And mm-hmm. One of the artists that he sent me to that stuck out the most was Immortal Technique. Mm -hmm. Immortal Technique is a huge inspiration for me because he was the first time that I could listen to an artist not only be great at storytelling, but also speak on like the harsh realities of life. Like I was in seventh grade when I heard the song Dance with the Devil. And it's literally just a gruesome story about how a boy who wanted to make a better life for his family and wanted to make money but was surrounded by evil, how he was participating in the evil in order to reach his goals of becoming better for himself and and for his family. Mm -hmm. And the details are so gruesome. I remember remember having a bunch of nightmares about it afterwards. Oh, my God, like, so vivid. And then from that point on, I'm like, yo, if art can affect you like this, this is the type of art I'm trying to make, fam. Like, <laughs> the yeah. art that you can't help but feel and you can't help but address what is happening. Like, it's, it's hard to ignore. And so that was a big inspiration as far as uh, music, uh, a mortal technique for sure. And then later on, got into DMX, and DMX was the, the mm-hmm. outer layer behind passion and fire for me. Um, because DMX was such a, rest in peace DMX, man. He was so good at having a song where he could cry and you'd be like, oh my God, I can't help but cry with you. But then also have a song that's like, I am strong and like, 
anybody who wants problems. I don't count which you do, 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 do. Yeah. It's me then middle finger, you like, you know, like I'm with all of that. I'm like, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I want to say too, that sounds like exactly some of the stuff you've been talking about too. Like you, when you can see sort of the spectrum of an artist as a person that you might know, I mean, that's absolutely the, that's the, that's the real, as you say. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm trying to think the third would probably be, uh, Nas. Nas has always been a, mm-hmm. one of those, those people whose writing just makes me sit down and I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I need to sit down and write some more. So I, I feel like I'm good at writing and I feel like I'm good at storytelling. And then I listen to Nas doing it. I'm like, okay, yeah. I gotta go back. I gotta, I gotta get this together. Um, to this day, I Gave You Power is still one of the greatest hip hop stories ever told. Mm-hmm. So yeah, musical inspiration. Yeah. Beautiful. So what uh what all will we be hearing on Friday then from you? Uh what what will be we be seeing on stage? What will we be hearing? Uh what kind of styles? Um Friday we we catching we catching everything. Friday we're catching for all the, the boom bap hip hop lovers, I got you, fam. For all of the uh the sad folks who are like, yo, man, it's been a rough week and that. I got you too. Cause I've had a rough <laughs> well. Yeah. Um Especially last week. Last week had a, a rough episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be a day full of everything. Because I, I recognize that artists, we occupy this strange space. Uh, we occupy the space of disrupting the everyday pattern. Um, people go through their lives. They get up, they eat breakfast, they go to work, come back home, watch TV. And for a lot of time, a lot of the times people almost forget what it's like to feel and be human because mm-hmm. we're constantly in this cycle of being productive. Mm-hmm. And people come to artists, come to shows to feel something. Like Artists, show me what it is to feel. And that's what we're doing Friday. We're about to come in, we're about to feel. We're going to feel the joy, the happiness. You know, We're going to dance a little bit and then we're going to cry and then we're going to be inspired and we want to feel strong we're going to go out into the world and we're going to do what needs to be done um so yeah this is this is the one-stop shop but everything <laughs> that you're going through i got you come slide through that's awesome so can't miss it nobody can miss this can't wait i wouldn't advise i wouldn't advise <laughs> Now, we would probably be remiss if we did not talk about the chessboard on your table. Yes, also, we have to go to the chessboard, uh, yes. So we just need an explanation on that real quick. Clearly, you must love it to some extent if it's sitting out in your living room. So chess is, is, has been really important for me because I'm constantly moving pieces. I'm an artist. Um, I just graduated law school. Woo-hoo. Great work. And then, uh-huh. And and uh, constantly, I'm constantly having to make different decisions. And so when I'm find myself in that space of having to make difficult decisions, I play myself and I like move a, spe- a piece and go off and think and try to strategize. And then I come back to the board and I'm like, okay. Um, and for a long time, um, I only just knew how to move the pieces. I, mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily know how to strategize. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, a few years ago. I went to go visit my uncle Nick while he was in prison. And while we were sitting down, he's like, you trying to play chess? I know how to move the pieces. You know? yeah. He's like, no, we got to get you right. So as we we're sitting there talking about life, you know, so playing chess and he's teaching me the strategies and joints that work and joints that don't work. And it just started to become like an integral part of my life and thinking and processing. Um, so after getting the strategies with him. I'm like, yo, I need to start playing chess more. So I started inviting all the homies, like, hey, come play chess. Don't walk with me. Someone would, someone wouldn't. Um, but luckily, I've been blessed to have people around me who are like, yo, I'm, I've never played chess. I want to learn how to play. I'm like, I got you. So I just pop up uh, with the homies. And I'm like, all right. And essentially teaching them to play chess, but also applying it to life. Yes. And then usually using life lessons to help them understand how the pieces move and how to set them up in the best way. Mm -hmm. Um, And then ultimately 
teaching them to be okay with letting pieces go for the end goal, which is to win. Um, oh, man. Most people are like, yo, I'm collecting pieces. I'm winning. And it's like, eh, I'm not chess work. Yeah. Dang. That sounds like the best therapy session of life. Yes. Hey, chess work. I'm great, fam. Yeah, man. I mean, and we've been talking about trying to get like a strong chess community going in Des Moines. Again, I know how to move the pieces, but I don't know the strategy. But I just keep seeing so many people, I mean, talk about chess really romantically like that. And I would love, love, love to help get chess like more integrated into the schools and get kids to, you know, after school chess clubs. And, you know, especially if they're not into sports or music or something like that, and they're looking for another way to express themselves. I mean, or even if they are into sports, I yes. was mentoring, uh, he, he's too young, so I can't say his name, but he's, <laughs> uh, I was in, mentoring this, uh, this young guy and he's into soccer, you know, he's great at that and he's wonderful. Um, but he was really disconnected in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, he's has some level of interest in chess. Send them to me. I got you. Um, and literally, it was a perfect way, a perfect segue to get him to open up because we're sitting there playing chess and I'm explaining to him, you know, how important it is, each piece, how important each piece is and why they're important and why mm-hmm. uh, strategy is important, but also how important it is to be able to be willing to let things go. And as we're just sitting there having that conversation and kind of moving through it, you see the, the wheels in his head kind of turning because he's at that point in his life where, you know, he's getting older and he has to start making big decisions for himself. Like, yeah. hmm. It's like, okay, so what about this? What about this? Like, well, you know, I wouldn't advise you to give up your queen. You know, she's your greatest protection mm-hmm. and, you know, your greatest offense as well. But if you have the rest of your pieces behind you and you know how you want to get to your end goal, then maybe you do have to give up your queen. I wouldn't advise it. (laughs) If you have a good plan and you think it's going to get you where you want to be, then sure. And being able to use chess pieces metaphorically is always nice. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I think games and chess, exactly. But it's a great, or especially, is a great place to practice like failure or losing also, you know, in a, in a safe space where, you know, that might absolutely be where you end up and, and that's okay. You know? Yeah. And, and the, I think games in general are especially good for recognizing what is important because mm-hmm. during our, our chess game, I sit there and make moves. And he's like, that's a stupid move. I was like, okay. And as I'm sitting there playing, he's like, I feel like you were taking it easy on me. I'm like, well, like chess, similar to life, it's not just one game. It's a series of games. So your strategy should always be, what is the best way for me to win the most out of the series of games instead of just only focusing on one particular game? Because in my mind, you thought that was a stupid move. I sit there, put the move out there to see how you react and see what your style of play is. Right. That tells me a lot more than if I just sit there and move all my pieces correctly and then I'm not really paying attention to how you play because then I have to essentially ignore you and just do my strategy. No, I'm willing to sacrifice this piece to learn more about you, to learn more about how I can win the most out of the series of games, even if I lose this one. Um, And that for him... (laughs) <laughs> yeah like what I'm like that's life life is a series of games you're constantly going to be in places where you have to move and interact with people you're constantly going to be in places where you know you may have to give up something you constantly be in spaces where you gain something or you may even be in the scenario where you're gaining something that's taking something from someone else mm-hmm. um, but it's all right so if i'm going to take something from someone else how am i going to act in a way that still benefits the most people um so yeah, chess yeah. man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like our mission. You know, games are about learning and teaching. It's about cooperating sometimes, competing sometimes, knowing the difference. Uh, yeah, and I think that there's kind of a flow state you can get into with games too, where you get so into playing it that you can start thinking through some of the other stuff that you have been able to process. And 
Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, we feel that. Yeah. <laughs> we are there with you. I feel like we're on the same page here. Uh, yeah, this conversation has been great today. I mean, we've gone all over the place, but I feel like we have all learned something. I'm, I feel wiser coming out of this conversation. I don't know about you guys, but yes, I do. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. It's definitely, it's definitely one of those high vibrational joints. Yes. Uh, well, I just want to shoot out a quick reminder here, too, that you can see Andre Davis uh, on stage at XBK. You might get some wisdom out of it, too. I'm sh- I am sure you will. that you will get some wisdom out of this. So you do not want to miss it. It is this Friday, July 16th at 730. And just a reminder, don't forget about that vinyl happy hour that goes from 6 to 7 o'clock beforehand. You don't need tickets for that. Just awesome drinks, hanging out, good vibes. And then do make sure that you snag your tickets, though, for that 7.30 show. And, uh, you know, if you can't, reminder that that is on YouTube and Facebook streaming. Um, but we recommend getting tickets. So yes. they are limited. Uh, they are selling out. So get them while they're good. Uh, you can get those at xbklive.com. Um, so hurry up, get those. Don't forget to stream if you can't make it. And uh, we hope to see you there. This is going to be exciting. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for having me.